Welcome. This video covers the status of the COVID-19 pandemic as it developed through the month of October of 2020. And I'm afraid the news is much worse than it was for my last month's report, as the numbers will show. Let's first take a look at the global statistics. We are currently at 46 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. That's up 12 million from last month, which is an increase of over 30%. Global fatalities is now at 1.2 million. That's up about 200,000 since last month. You'll note that that percentage is a much smaller percentage than the number of increasing cases, uh, which indicates that we are getting better at treating this thing. However, the fatality rate is still around about 3%, may have dropped fractionally, but is still near 3%, which makes it 30 times more deadly than the average annual flu. Now we'll take a look at the worst affected countries. First of all, we'll start off with the most cases, and the USA leads the way there with 9.2 million, an increase of nearly 2 million since last month. That means by the time of the next uh, report, we'll be over 10 million. India is close behind with 8.2 million. Brazil uh, is at 5.5 million. Then we get to Russia, France, Spain and Argentina with all just over 1 million cases. The places with the most fatalities, again the USA leads the way with a 3% mortality rate, about average in other words, at 234,000. Brazil uh, is at 159,000, India at 122,000, Mexico at 91,000, and then we have UK, Italy and France, all with less than 50,000. Let's see how different parts of the world are doing. You can see from this map that Europe in particular is undergoing a tremendous increase in the number of cases, and this could be part of their second wave. North America, and Russia and Central Asia are doing similarly. Meanwhile, areas near the equator and south of the equator seem to have, still have their uh, pandemics under relatively good control. I'm assuming this is the difference between the northern and southern hemispheres. The northern hemisphere is going into winter and we were expecting an, an increase during that time. The southern hemisphere is going into summer and there will be a decrease as a result. As yet, no drugs have been shown to be effective in treating COVID-19. Remdesivir is authorized for treatment of adult patients who need hospitalization, and it may make recovery times shorter, although there's differing results from different studies from around the world. Hydroxychloroquine, uh, et al., uh, those sorts of drugs, <clears throat> the FDA initially authorized their use, but has withdrawn that recommendation as it's been shown that they are completely ineffective. Convalescent plasma, as was used on the president, um, is an emergency authorization only. If it grants any sort of immunity or antibodies, that immunity seems to be short-lived. Dextromethasone uh, is used for patients on ventilators, but it doesn't actually treat the disease, it just minimizes the damage to the lungs caused by the ventilators. So we don't have any remedial me medications that if you catch this disease, it will uh, knock it down quickly. So do we have any good candidates for vaccines? At the moment, that seems to be still a long way off. There are 35 vaccines in phase one trials. There are 14 vaccines in phase two trials. There are 11 vaccines in phase three. That's where you give the vaccine to a large number of people and see how many of them still catch COVID-19. And there are six vaccines recommended for limited distribution. That's in emergency uses only, and they're not been shown to be effective as yet. As moment, there are zero approved vaccines. And if a vaccine is approved, we have to get 7 billion doses uh, made up and distributed around the world, and that's a non-trivial uh, task. One of the policies that some countries like the US have been pursuing is to achieve herd immunity. That is when enough people get infected that the virus can no longer spread. There's a formula for determining what percentage of the population needs to have caught the virus to be able to claim herd immunity. 
and that's associated with the reproduction figure for each of the virus and for COVID-19 it's somewhere around about five. That would put herd immunity would be achieved at about 80% of the population. It's one minus one over R0. But to achieve that 80% of the population have caught it would imply that we have to have about two million deaths uh, before that is achieved. And I think that's an unacceptable level of fatalities to accept. And early indications are that immunity may only last a year, like other coronaviruses. And this would be a problem for vaccines too. Areas with low infection levels or low vaccination rates uh, would be subject to a large outbreaks of the disease because it would still be there. So this is not something that can be achieved according to most of the medical experts. I showed this figure last time that COVID ha seems to have a, a lot of lingering symptoms for some people and apparently that number is around about 10%. So for the 9 million people in the United States that have caught COVID, most of whom have recovered, um, about 900,000 are going to have effectively a pre-existing condition that makes them more susceptible to other diseases and reinfection by COVID-19. These things include lung and heart damage, fatigue, shortness of breath, headaches, and joint pain. So this is uh, something, even if you catch the disease and recover, you, you may not be the same person afterwards as when you, before you start, got the disease. Sorry to end on that cheerless note, but the important thing here now is to stay safe and um, I will see you next time.